My name is Kaylee, and in this video I'm going to explain 85 million years of evolution, starting from the very first primates, all the way to us modern humans. This video is kindly sponsored by Fume, but as always, more on the sponsor later in the video. As I just mentioned, I will start with the actual origins of our evolutionary timeline, which starts 85 million years ago when the very first primates emerged. The primates divided into two suborders, some 74 million years ago. The suborder of the Strepsirines, which includes the lemurs, the Galagos and the Lorisids, and the suborder of the Haplorines, which includes the Tarsiers and the Simians, the Simians being the monkeys and the apes. So 60 million years ago, the simians underwent a rapid increase in diversity. And around 40 million years ago, some of the simians colonized South America. They colonized South America in the sense that they inhabited South America, not in the sense of colonization by humans, as we have seen in the past few hundred years in certain parts of the world. They were not colonized, right? All right, continue. The simians in South America are known better as the New World Monkeys, while the remaining simians in Africa and Eurasia became known as the Catriniclade, but known to most as the Old World Monkeys. So between 30 and 20 million years ago, during the Miocene, which is an extremely important time when it comes to like evolution and all that stuff, the parv order Caterini, the old world monkeys, split into two distinct evolutionary groups. The Cercopithecoidae, otherwise known as the old world monkeys, the ones with the tails, and the Hominoidae, or as I called them for fun in the past, the homi no idea, which are the ones without tails, the apes. The Cercopithecoidae, the monkeys with tails, are of no further importance here when we look at human evolution. They are, of course, important when looking at the full extent of primate evolution, but the focus of this video is the human evolutionary timeline. And so, therefore, looking at primates ends here. So on screen you can see the picture of the human evolutionary timeline and all the way down below at 20 million years ago we indeed see Hominoidae. As you can clearly see many branches forked off from the Hominoidae, including the branch of the gibbons around 18 million years ago. The gibbons are therefore known as the lesser apes in the family of Hylobatidae and our ancestors became known as the family of Hominidae, otherwise better known as the Great Apes. Around 16 million years ago, the family of Hominidae split into two subfamilies, the Ponginae and the Homininae. The Ponginae is the lineage of the genus Pongo, which contains the species of the Sumatran orangutan, the Tapanuli orangutan, and the Bornean orangutan. They are the only surviving species of the entire subfamily of the Ponginae. But they weren't the only ones in the subfamily of Ponginae. Other now extinct tribes, genera, and species in the subfamily of Ponginae were Sivapithecus, Korathpithecus, Gigantopithecus, Lufangpithecus, and Ankarapithecus. Break free from bad habits with Fume. It's not your typical habit-busting gadget, trust me. There's no mind voodoo here, just pure innovation. Fume uses flavored air, not vapor, and it's all natural, no chemicals, and it's just deliciousness. It's an innovative, award-winning flavored air device. So ditch the guilt, keep the neutral parts of your habit. There's lots of cores and flavors to choose from. All taste like a flavor party to me. I personally think my favorite is the crisp mint. It's even more flavorful than I thought, and it feels very fresh. So I was skeptical, but wow, fresh, flavorful. And the design, totally eye-catching because of the real wood and the shape of it. Phew, is a game changer. Stylish, effective, and honestly, so fun to fidget with. Don't we all just love clicking sounds? Stomping is something we all put off because it's hard, but switching to Fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 150,000 customers and has thousands of success stories. 
and there's no reason that this can't be you. Join few in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey back today. Head to tryfume.com slash Kaylee or scan the QR code and use code Kaylee to get 10% off when you get the journey back today. The Fume Solano launched last November and you can upgrade your journey pack to the Solano to enjoy the premium walnut barrel and Onyx black coated mouthpiece that has a smoother finish and still get 10% off. That's tryfum.com and use code Kaylee to save an additional 10% off on your order today. So as you can imagine, during the Miocene, the great apes didn't live just in Africa. There were quite a few of these great apes that lived in Europe and Asia. Like for instance, the just now mentioned Sivapithecus from the Sivapithecini tribe in the subfamily of Ponginae. They lived in the region of the Indian subcontinent 12.2 million years ago. We also have Dryopithecus from the tribe of Dryopithecini, which is a subfamily of Homininae that lived around the Mediterranean between 12.5 to 11.1 million years ago. I've actually covered Dryopithecus in a video in the past. Danuvius guggenmosi is also from the tribe of Dryopithecini that lived in the area of southern Germany around 11.6 million years ago. And of course, as you can imagine, I've also made a video on guggenmosi. Also from the tribe of Dryopithecini in the subfamily of Homininae is Uranopithecus that lived in the region of Greece between 9.6 and 8.7 million years ago. We also have earlier mentioned Koratpithecus from the Pongini tribe in the subfamily of Ponginae that lived in the region of Thailand and Myanmar some 9 to 7 million years ago. And Oreopithecus, again from the tribe of Dryopithecini in the subfamily of Homininae, that lived between 9 and 7 million years ago in the region of what is today Italy. I decided to give the names of the species, including the subfamily and tribe, to make it easier for you to spot them on the evolutionary tree on screen. I think it makes it a lot easier for you to follow me, so to speak, when you can actually see what I'm saying on screen as well. Around 8 million years ago, the subfamily Homininae split into two tribes, the Hominini and the Gorolini. And yes, I still feel like Gorolini sounds like a super fancy Italian dish. I just can't help it. Like I want some Gorolini with my tortellini. Make it happen. So the Gorolini tribe is where the modern day gorilla species fits in. So that really is quite a lot of species in the region of Eurasia during a warmer climatic period of that area. But what happened to them? Around 7 million years ago, temperatures dropped sharply during the late Miocene cooling, which led to significant glaciation around 6.2 million years ago that lasted until 5.5 million years ago. During this glaciation period, the landscape in Eurasia changed drastically, which led to the extinction of the great apes in the region. Although there are some anthropologists that have suggested the possibility of some of these species to have migrated into Africa. So one of these possible species to have migrated back into Africa is Ororen tugenensis, a bipedal great ape as it's thought that the footprints on the beach at Trachilos on the island of Crete in the country of Greece were made by Ororen tugenensis some 6 million years ago during that significant glaciation period which made the European landscape uninhabitable for the great apes and they most likely migrated south. Of course, it is unclear if this species indeed migrated back into Africa, and it can't be said for certain without doubt that the Trachilos footprints were from Ororen Tugenensis. But I did interview one of the authors of the paper about these footprints on my channel back in 2021, as I interviewed Professor Per Alberg from the Uppsala University. I do recommend watching that video if you'd like to know more about the subject of ancient fossilized footprints and the oldest hominin footprints. Highly recommend just checking it out. He's an amazing science communicator. Somewhere between seven and five million years ago, the fossil record indicates the last pan homo ancestor, which means that around that time, the Australopithecina and the pans split. 
the pons lead to the modern day chimpanzees and the bonobos, while the Australopithecina are known as our ancestors. Although not all species in the Australopithecina subtribes are ancestral to us, there are many species that forked off long before our ancestral species even emerged. So the subtribe of Australopithecina consists of the following species. Chrysopithecus freibergi, Sahelanthropus chadensis, Aurorin tugenensis, Ardipithecus ramidus, Ardipithecus cadaba, Paranthropus robustus, Paranthropus boisei, Paranthropus aethiopicus, Kenyanthropus platyops, and of course, the genus of the Australopithecines. I have made videos on Kenyanthropus, Sahelanthropus, and Paranthropus on my channel in the past. I highly recommend watching those if you want to learn more. So the genus of the Australopithecines consists of Australopithecus africanus, Australopithecus diatomata, Australopithecus garhi, Australopithecus sediba, Australopithecus afarensis, Australopithecus anamensis, and Australopithecus barelgazali. The most famous Australopithecus species is afarensis. It most likely gained its fame through the discovery of the extremely well-preserved partial skeleton known as Lucy, which was discovered in 1974 by paleoanthropologist Donald Johansson and, at the time, graduate student Tom Gray. About 2.8 million years ago, a new species emerged, the species Homo habilis. Although there are debates on if habilis should be placed in the Homo genus or if it should be placed in the Australopithecus genus. I'm not an expert. I'm not an academic. Therefore, it isn't my place to say definitive it should be placed in either one. But for the sake of this video, I will say Homo habilis, as this species is currently still officially known under this name. Which would make Homo habilis the first species of human in the Homo genus? Homo habilis is almost certainly a descendant from Australopithecus africanus, and Homo habilis is known as the manufacturer of Oldowan stone tools. Its nickname is actually Handyman. Oldowan stone tools are the oldest stone tools created by a species in the Homo genus, for as long as Homo habilis will be placed in the Homo genus. Although this is not the oldest stone tool industry. The Lomequi stone tool industry dates back to 3.3 million years ago, predating the first species in the Homo genus by nearly 500,000 years. Meaning that actual stone tools and the start of the Stone Age predate all human species and were created by the Australopithecines. I, of course, have made a video on Homo habilis in the past on my channel, and I definitely recommend watching it. So now we've come to the very first species in the Homo genus that is not contested in any way, shape or form, who is without a doubt an ancestor of us all, Homo erectus. Cue all the jokes and all the funny stuff. Yeah, she said erectus. But yeah, no, it's just, Latin for upright. The first actual upright human species. I have made a 40 minute long video about the species of Homo erectus and if you want to watch a detailed video on all you need to know about this species, I highly recommend you watch that. Homo erectus emerged around 2 million years ago, and 1.8 million years ago, just 200,000 years after it first emerged, it had already left Africa and inhabited the country of Georgia. Not the state in the United States, but the country of Georgia in Eurasia. And eventually Homo erectus reached as far as the Indonesian islands. Like it went all over. One of the most resilient species that has ever lived on this planet, Homo erectus was the first human species to inhabit different continents, creating and using fire, and creating art like we see on this seashell in Indonesia. Several human species seem to have evolved from Homo erectus, including Homo antecessor, which emerged around 1.2 million years ago and disappeared somewhere around 800,000 years ago. Homo heidelbergensis is also a descendant of Homo erectus, which emerged approximately 700,000 years ago and disappeared somewhere around 200,000 years ago. And it is highly likely that Homo floresiensis in Indonesia is a descendant of Homo erectus as well. Homo floresiensis being the hobbit species. Of all these three named species, 
I've of course created videos. I mean, did you expect anything else from me? Homo heidelbergensis is actually the most likely last common ancestor of the Denisovans, Homo neanderthalensis, who are better known as Neanderthals, and Homo sapiens, us modern humans. The Denisovans seem to have emerged somewhere around 500,000 years ago and disappeared around 30,000 years ago. Neanderthals seem to have emerged around 430,000 years ago. Uh, at least the oldest found fossils of Neanderthals date back this far. They definitely could have emerged earlier. And we do know that Neanderthals disappeared around 32,000 years ago. And I've got a couple videos on Neanderthals, including a few that look into the possible reasons for Neanderthals going extinct. Highly recommend watching all of those if you haven't already. I even look into why they went extinct and the possible reasons as to why they disappeared. And then last, but certainly not least, Homo sapiens, us modern humans. We emerged some 300,000 years ago at Jebel Irut in Morocco. Well, at least the oldest known Homo sapiens fossils were found at Jebel Irut in Morocco and date back to 300,000 years ago. So there you have it. A detailed explanation of the evolutionary timeline starting from the very first primates all the way to us modern humans. All the branches and all the other species that forked off and are now extinct. 85 million years of evolution in one concise video. So what do you think of the evolutionary timeline? And does this video make it a lot easier for you to understand why there are still monkeys? Why there are still apes? The reason that there are still monkeys and apes is because their species, their ancestral species forked off so long ago and they all went their own evolutionary route. Human evolution is a lot different than, let's say, for instance, whale evolution or horse evolution or, I don't know, turtle evolution, crocodile evolution, shark evolution. I can continue for like hours, I think. There are many differences. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Head to tryfum.com slash Kaylee or scan the QR code and use code Kaylee to save an additional 10% off on your order today. If you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos and click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, including the ones that I mentioned in this video, which were a lot of them, I understand, sorry. Uh, but if you haven't watched them, then um, maybe change that and um, go watch them. I've got more than 200 videos on the channel. There's a lot for you to see. There's a lot for you to learn and a lot of knowledge that I've tried to spread. Uh, you can also click one of the links in the description down below. You can click the card in the upper right corner to watch more videos, or you can click a video in the end card. I mean, whatever floats your boat, just keep watching. Uh, I would also like to say a massive thank you to all my patrons and my channel members. Thank you so much for supporting me and being here with me and making my life a little bit easier with like paying bills and stuff. So thank you. Uh, very much appreciate that. I'm now doing live streams at least once a month to go over the new archaeological discoveries that I haven't covered on the channel yet so that we can at least give them some time. I very much enjoyed doing the live stream, so join me whenever you can. And uh, with that said, I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys!